Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com and in this video I'm going to be talking about Short Pixel Adaptive Image Optimizer. I'm going to preface everything I start with this video with, if you are not paying for Short Pixel, you should not have this plugin installed. This plugin will not function correctly if you do not have Short Pixel Adaptive Image uh, short pixel images account associated with the website. What I often see most with this plugin is people add it onto their website because they think it's going to be like the Jetpack Site Accelerator feature. What actually ends up happening is most of the time your images just simply get redirected. And this happens for a variety of reasons, but it's most of the time because they're just not paying for short pixel image optimizer. And to be honest, that's because this plugin does a really bad job of communicating that to the user. When you install it, you get a nice simple settings panel, and I'm gonna give you the general rundown with it. I've already shown a general config right here, but I'm gonna run down the settings. But you have to pay very close attention. As it says, there are five reasons. You have a firewall that's blocking short pixel servers. Your website is hosted on an intranet. The first time the image is being accessed, or, you know, the most important one is there are not enough image credits in the account. Likely the domain or website you're using is not associated with your account. That is honestly the biggest reason is I don't understand why some people install this plugin on websites where they have no short pixel accounts. If you do not have one, it is not going to work. And honestly, this falls on short pixel. There is no communication in the plugin that it needs to have an account associated with it. Even if there was a simple box to insert an API key, like in the traditional short pixel plugin, or there was a little notice that it wasn't associated with an account, that would be helpful. But none of those things are true. So shame on the developers just a little bit here. There should be more clarification for the users because I run across websites all the time that install this plugin and none of their images get optimized and they don't know that because they thought they just installed it and it worked. It does not. We're going to run through the settings though if you do have an account and I'm going to tell you typically what you should be running. Um, when you install the plugin, you get general options here. What this does is it works on the same principle as the Jetpack Site Accelerator. It rewrites your image URLs to serve it from short pixels in CDN. You can set it up to work from your own CDN, but why would you want to? Um, it's just more work for not real benefit, any real benefit. So you get to set your compression level. Typically lossy is what I recommend. It'll give you the best compression rate. If you notice any sort of noticeable image quality reduction, meaning don't zoom into your 1920 by 1080 pixel image at 20 times to try and look for any de degradation. Nobody ever does that for your website. I, like even this image right here, if I open it in a new tab, nobody is going to just zoom all the way in for to this image to see if it, the quality isn't perfect. Like, oh, look at all that graininess. Don't, don't, don't be very restrictive on it. If you're a photography website, go ahead and use Glossy. If you're really concerned about image quality, Glossy is the typical recommendation. If you want absolutely zero loss in quality. You can use lossless, but I'm just going to come right out and say it. If you're using lossless compression, there's absolutely no reason for you to be paying for short pixel adaptive images. Just compress your images through uImage Optimizer or Robin Image Optimizer and save yourself the money because that's just really a waste for what short pixel is meant for. So I wouldn't use that, but loss is typically what I recommend. You gotta make sure WebP images are enabled. This will not require you to have any special WebP plugin. It does it on the fly, and it will serve the image if it detects the browser will support it. It does this by checking on their server and sending the correct image to the browser, just like, short, just like the Jetpacks plugin. A fade in effect allows you to lazy load the images when give it a nice little loading effect. I typically can recommend that. Otherwise, they'll just pop in into existence. Smart cropping can help crop images if it determines that the image does not fit in the container and there's extra data. So it tries to cut off the excess junk that isn't being displayed because you're showing it in a smaller container than it supports. Um, honestly, honestly, this is kind of a, a, a very niche feature. My typical recommendation is whatever image you're using, you should be cropping it to fit that size. But if you're not using it, and you're purposely cropping things out by changing paddings and margins and trying to mess your way around with it with CSS, 
go ahead and give smart crop a chance but oftentimes what you'll see what happens is it changes the way your image looks to a way that you may very well just not like you could choose to remove exif data i typically recommend this if you're a photographer you may want to keep it for some reason otherwise by all means just remove it what's great about this plugin is it handles all the images and serves it from their cdn so your images are not actually being stripped of anything on your own server your images are basically kept on your own server this just downloads those images, does the compression on their server, and then beams that to the browser. Under the advanced section, you can change the API URL to if you wanted to use your own CDN. I don't really know why you'd want to use that for most users, just leave it to the regular one. For the replace method, I recommend using both to replace both the source and source set. They note that it is experimental. If you notice an issue, typically when you have a zoom in function or a type of gallery that when you click it opens the full size version of the image you may run into issues with this if you do just go ahead and use the source attribute and it should be fine lazy loading background images obviously I recommend that background images can be quite large especially if you're using something like visual composer or elementor go ahead and give this a shot if you notice that background images are not loading in just simply disable the option the background maximum width will set the maximum width of backgrounds on all devices. So if you have a very large background image in width, like let's say you upload a, a 5,000 pixel width image, and that's for very, very, very large displays like mine, you do not, you do not want to leave it that way. You're not targeting the most user. They recommend 1920 pixels, and that's what I also recommend you should typically design and optimize the website around 1920 by 1080 that's what most users are using you can then choose to replace uh, the image files in css files i don't recommend enabling this option while it is a good idea in principle what ends up happening is it does interfere sometimes with certain plugins that handle compression if you're using something like auto optimize or fast velocity you may run into some issues and you can just uncheck the option here, but I just don't typically ever enable it. You could choose to replace in JSON data. So if you're using like admin Ajax calls, you notice this if you're using uh, the grid builder and visual composer, just check both of the options and it should work without an issue. I've used this on many visual composer based websites and it's helped quite a bit. I just don't recommend using visual composer to be quite frank, but some themes have it. If you are using visual composer, that's fine. Just remember to not use the grid system. And then you have the exclude exclusions right here. You could choose to leave out uh, selectors for lazy loading, resizing, or to avoid any and all compression. And then finally, you can choose to exclude URLs. And by default, they exclude Gravatar. You could try to exclude it if you so wish. You could just remove it and see how that works. But really, that's... That's all there is to short pixel adaptive images. But remember, this plugin does absolutely nothing if there is no short pixel account associated with your domain. You have to pay for this plugin. I just wish that they clarified that in the plugin options. Even if the adding the API key was superfluous to this plugin's functionality, it does add that sense of self-awareness that a lot of users lack because honestly a lot of sites that i run into that use this plugin they don't have an account set up and they're not paying for it so all their images just simply redirect to the correct source url and that that's just not good for their performance at the end of the day if you have any questions you can please feel free to ask in the comments below otherwise thank you all so much for watching make sure to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one